Hello. With this video, I wanted to take the opportunity to talk about Endwalker. And the reason for that is because if you're watching this now, Criterion Dungeons are just around the corner next week. If you're watching this in the future, maybe it will provide some insight into if I was right or wrong. Either way, I want to talk about Endwalker and its problem. The problem people have with Endwalker. The problem I have with Endwalker. Now I am open to criticism. If you do not agree with what I say, you can easily dispute that in the comments below. And I'm not saying my way is the right way or my word is gospel, because it isn't. I'm just one person with an opinion and that is it. Even if I'm a content creator or not, my opinion does not hold any more weight than anyone else who plays the game. Either way, I did want to share my opinion on Endwalker and why I think it has a problem and what its problems are. So the first problem that I have with Endwalker is the oversimplification of jobs and the meta as a whole and how that all kind of works. So I'd like to begin that healers are definitely a problem to play. I can't see myself playing a healer because to me it is so jarringly boring to play a healer as they currently are. I don't mind playing healers when I have them geared up and I'm doing anything outside of savage content. Sometimes I will even do savage content as a healer once I have my healers fully geared up. But even then, I don't find it that engaging. It's really not. You're doing most of your healings through OGCDs, and for the better half of a fight, you're just spamming the same button over and over again. This is a pretty big design flaw in my opinion, and it's kind of just been left alone since kind of Shadowbringers. And it's only gotten worse, it's only gotten more jarringly bad and boring as they've left this issue to just continue to bake. So I do feel like healing does need to change. The problem is, how do you change healing? With the way this game works, it's kind of hard to change how healing actually works. Personally, I wouldn't ask for too much, just maybe a bit more of an engaging rotation, similar to how tanks rotations are. They're not too difficult, but they are somewhat complex and you do need to kind of have a know-how of what buttons you're pressing. Which also leads me on to the tanks. I do think the tanks are also a bit of an issue as well because tanks all play very much the same. You kind of have to have a little know-how about how each tank plays but if you played warrior you can play dark knight, if you've played gunbreaker you can play paladin and vice versa. Honestly, if you just have a little bit of know-how on how these jobs work and function, you're going to be able to play these jobs quite easily. Just press your buttons, press your cooldowns, and do things that make sense. Maybe look up a little bit, but otherwise tanks are extremely easy to play and pick up. And they're very similar to one another as well. The identity the tanks have between each other is pretty bad. It's it's not great. And it does need some changing, hopefully in 7.0. I'm not asking for changes right now because I know that changes will not happen that drastic right now. But I do think that's an issue and those two issues are worth pointing out. But say for instance, I was to play a melee DPS. So I was to play a monk. Maybe I got really good at monk. Doubtful because I'm terrible at monk. But maybe I was to get really good at monk and then I wanted to play samurai. There's a big difference between how these two jobs play. A big difference in play style. If I was to be a monk, I could not just instantly be an extremely good samurai. It would require practice and time. So that's kind of not the case with the tanks. But don't worry, there is some criticism to the DPS as well. And this criticism is mainly the two minute burst window. The two minute burst window initial goal was to make it easier for lower end players to just press their buffs and align with everyone else. The problem is this has made more problems than it's actually solved. As before, there were 90 and 180 second cooldowns, and the explanation for this, I believe, was that if you just make all the big cooldowns two minutes, it means everyone can just press those two minutes when they come off cooldown, and it's, it's quite easy to do. Now, I'm not sure where this logic came from, because most players, either way, would have just pressed their 90s and 180s off cooldown anyway, and there are only a very few niche situations where you would hold on to these cooldowns for raid buffs when you knew you wouldn't get an extra usage if you didn't hold on to them anyway. So very niche situations where that would even happen anyway and it hasn't really helped a hell of a lot in Pyfinder that much anyway because jobs that fall behind on the two minute burst window now get kind of neglected. Now 
we still take every job in Pathfinder, and the game's balance is still really good, and I'm not going to deny that. Every job is viable, and you don't need two melee DPS to clear content in Pathfinder either. Everything is viable, as I said. But it is a bit of an issue, I think it has caused more problems than it's actually solved. So again, in 7.0, I would love to see them actually revert this, maybe throw in some 90 second and 180 second cooldowns back into the game. And it would also just make the game feel a lot more exciting. Like the two minute burst window is very boring. It's you have fun every two minutes and after that, you're not having fun anymore until the next two minute cooldown. And they even put mechanics down into encounters that aren't that difficult by themselves, but because you're doing your two minute burst window during these mechanics, they are now artificially more difficult because of that. I don't think this is exactly bad, but if they were to go back on the two minute meta, then maybe these current encounters wouldn't age as well as they previously have. Now, I don't think that's a bad thing. I think you need to just move forward and not worry too much about the past. But either way, that's just my two cents on that. There's another thing that I do want to mention about Endwalker that I think is somewhat of an issue, but I don't think it's a huge issue. And I think the rate tiers overall in Endwalker have been incredibly weak. I don't think these rate tiers have been that good, especially in comparison to Shadowbringers, where the rate tiers were excellent almost 10 out of 10s. Like those fights were really good, really well designed, very unique, different mechanics and all that kind of stuff. But I don't really want to focus too much on that. I want to focus more on the quantity versus quality and longevity of content. And that's my next point that I'm going to move on to is comparing Shadowbringers content to Endwalker content. Now, this might sound crazy, but for the most part, Shadowbringers has been more well received than Endwalker. And I took a look at the content comparison from Endwalker to Shadowbringers, and it kind of blew me away because the content comparison Endwalker outshines the amount of content that Shadowbringers had. If we look at Shadowbringers, it had one ultimate raid. Okay, Endwalker, two ultimate raids. There is an issue with one of those ultimate raids, but I'm gonna say that for maybe another video. And let's go back to Shadowbringers now. We have all the standard stuff, you know, free Savage Raid tiers, dungeons, Blue Mage update, some niche content like Ish Guardian Restoration and Ocean Fishing, but overall not too much additional stuff. The additional thing that Shadowbringers brung to the table was a exploration zone, similar to Stormblood's Eureka, but we won't go into that. And that was the Bosnia Southern Front. Now the Bosnia Southern Front was an area, a big area, where you could, and you still can by the way, grind out relics and it had its own separate progression system which was complex and it had a lot to it but not too complex it was still fairly easy regardless this had a lot of content in it and it had two raids in it and one of these two raids had a savage version you didn't need to do the savage version it was just for an mount but that was an option that you could do either way it had two big raids to it which were quite enjoyable now if we go to endwalker and compare the additional content so one ultimate on shadowbringers and the bosnia sun front compared to endwalker two ultimates Three Criterion Dungeons, One Deep Dungeon, and Island Sanctuary. Now, Island Sanctuary, you might count that as niche content, but it's fairly accessible. Anyone can do Island Sanctuary. And then you have Ish Guardian Restoration, which may be the comparison, but not everyone could do Ish Guardian Restoration. You needed crafters leveled. Meanwhile, in Island Sanctuary, everyone could do it. So it's more accessible. So why, when we compare these two, is Shadowbringers still revered as the better expansion? Well, for one, Endwalker isn't finished yet. That's 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 a big thing. And Walker isn't even finished yet. We still got two Criterion Dungeons to go, and there is one coming out literally next week. The problem is longevity. That is the big issue here. Bosnia Southern Front provided a lot of longevity to it. There was a lot to do. You could just go in Bosnia Front, farm some relics, farm the the notes for the lore to get achievements, farm the fates, farm the jewels, try and get the mounts. Like there was a lot you could do in this content. Do the raids do the savage raids. It was a lot. Meanwhile, Criterion is you kind of do it once and you're done. The savage version is also a do it once and you're done. I don't exactly think that's a bad thing, but at least the normal mode Criterion, there needs to be some replayability there. There needs to be something. And I think something that they could do is add a weekly reward of gear or something like that. Something which makes you do it every week. Something that keeps you into the game getting new gear. And an alternative to gear would be Amazing, I think. I think an alternative to gear would work really well. I don't know why they're so scared to add 
an alternative to gear. It does, I'm not asking for Mythic Plus. I'm not asking for randomized stats or whatever Mythic Plus is on World of Warcraft. I'm not a big World of Warcraft player, so I'm not that educated in, in that matter. But for the most part, I'm just ad I'm just asking for maybe alternative right side, maybe some maybe a new set of accessories. Not not even left side, just a new set of accessories. That's something like that they could easily do and have it every week. Something like that. Maybe rotate bosses out every week as well in Criterion Dungeons because there is a boss at the end of the variant dungeon on a special path which you can only get in the variant dungeon and it doesn't actually make an appearance in the criterion dungeon at least in the last criterion dungeon which came up and they could do something like that as well they, they could spice up criterion dungeons they could add add longevity to it the problem is will they and that's why i wanted to make this video now rather than until next week because if i make it now we can look back at this video and it can be like was i right or was i wrong did criterion dungeons redeem and walker and give it the longevity content that it needs, the content to keep you attached and playing the game and logging in, or did it not? And you can just go back to doing whatever else you want to do. Also, I was talking about gear and an extra right side in Criterion Dungeons, but while we're on the topic of gear, I do just want to add that it would be really nice if they did make gearing a little bit easier, because I think gearing is still kind of rough right now. It's still kind of bad. So if you're like me, maybe you do Party Finder. And you're really unlucky, so you have to rely on tokens to get all your gear. Okay, that's fine. The problem is the token system is is still kind of bad. Like, it still requires a lot of tokens to get some of these pieces. Like, for example, the pants and body cost six tokens, and the weapon costs eight tokens. That's two months of clearing the same fight. So, to me, that's a bit ridiculous. It shouldn't take you eight weeks to get a weapon. I do really wish they would tone that down, and some people might call me crazy, but I think that should be four weeks minimum. I do not think it should be eight weeks. I think that's insane. So if I if I had my way, I would personally change that. I would make it so weapons, body and pants cost four tokens, gloves, boots, and helmet cost three tokens, and accessories and upgrade materials cost two tokens. I think that would be a nice way to kind of round it out. And you could gear your main fairly quickly, at least in a minimum of one month if you've been clearing since week one. And then you could get onto gearing alt jobs because a lot of us like to play alt jobs as well. A lot of us like to play other roles. Like I like to play healer as I mentioned and gearing up my healer would be really cool. And then maybe moving on to melee DPS and gearing them up. Now they do add augmenting crafted gear in a later patch which is a nice change i do like that they do that but still i'm just asking for you know best and sort so i can help groups out you know i can go as a fully geared savage healer and do something different i don't really heal much i tank mostly and just help a prog group out or something like that would be fun just something that would i think add a little bit more longevity to the game in a way if gearing was a bit better Another problem I have with gearing is a problem that's been an issue for a while now, but it, it only gets worse every expansion and they decide to add another melee to the game. And my problem is the sharing gear system. Now, I think tanks, healers, casters, and physical ranged are all fine. They all share gear, which is excellent. Thank goodness for that. But the problem is you have melee. Now, melee have three different sets of gear and Ninja also uses aiming right side. So my issue with melee is if you want to play a melee, you have to collect three different gear sets. Or you, you can, of course, main a melee. If you mained a Dragoon, you could transfer your gear to Reaper, which is cool. If you mained Monk, you can transfer your gear to Samurai. That's cool. But the problem is Ninja doesn't have any other job to do that with. I don't think that's actually an issue because I don't think they're going to add another melee in 7.0. I think that's ridiculous when they've just added a melee in 6.0. I don't think they're going to add another melee. If anything, they might add a physical range that uses scouting gear. Who knows? Could happen. But I think I would prefer if they just stopped making scouting gear, added dexterity to striking gear, and then just call it a day. Just make ninjas use striking gear. I mean, let's be honest, striking gear and scouting gear usually looks the same anyway, aesthetic-wise, so it really wouldn't make much of a difference. So that's my criticism for gearing as well. Not going to drag out too much. I just thought I'd add that little two cents into this video. That is my problem with Endwalker. In my honest opinion, those things that I've talked about. Now, I do apologize if I've dragged on points. This is completely unscripted because, yeah, I don't really have time this week to make a fully fledged out video. But also, I did really want to make this video and just go over this from well my heart and just talk about it. Talk about these issues. So we're going to see. I overall have really enjoyed Ed Walker, but yeah, there is problems that we need to go over. There is more issues that I have with it, like the 
top ultimate, but I'm not going to go into it now because this video seems to be dragging on a little bit and I don't want to drag out too much. And honestly, that could probably be its own separate video, so I'm not going to talk about it now. But yeah, who knows? Maybe the Bloom Edge update is really good as well, and maybe Criterion Dungeons will save this expansion with a bit of hope. And I guess we'll find out next week. Anyway, that'll do it for this video. Do let me know in the comments below if you agree with me, disagree, or you have your own issues with Endwalker, do let me know in the comments below and I'll see you in the next video. So goodbye for now. Thank you so much for watching and thank you to my Patreons as always. I really appreciate you guys. And yeah, goodbye. Take it easy. Subscribe. Bye bye.